Notice the very first thing I want you to do. The very first thing I want you to do, I want you to point to yourself. Say, the rest of my life. The rest of my life. Or say it like you really believe it. Say, the rest of my life. Will be the best of my life. Amen. Hey, John 10, 10 promised that Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. life. He didn't say, I've come that you might make a living. Yeah. There's a big difference between making a living and making a life. And he said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. One more time, if you're here, sit down. One more time at home, say, the rest of my life, the rest of my life. will be the best of my life. Now, I'm going to get you to say that as many times as I can because what you continually hear, you'll eventually believe. You know, if you heard your whole life, you're dumb, you're stupid, you'll never make anything of yourself, eventually you start believing that. But if you keep hearing the rest of your life will be the best of your life, pretty soon you'll start believing the rest of your life will be the best of your life. And John 10, 10 promised it. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. Now, I read it in the Amplified. I never used to read the Amplified Bible. I thought it was a girl Bible. <laughs> Only person I ever heard use it was Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer always used it, so I figured it must be a girl Bible. Then I read it myself one day. I like the way it says it here in John 10. 10 said, I came that you may have and enjoy life. How many want to enjoy your life? I mean, not just when you get to heaven, but while you're here. I come that you may have and enjoy life, have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. See, I like the way it says that in the Amplified. Just differences Amplified just has a lot of extra words. So maybe it is a girl Bible. So, anyway, uh, that we may have and enjoy life. Life was meant to be enjoyed. You know, life is a gift. I can't think, any, I can't think of anything worse than receiving a gift and not enjoying it. You know, I, I bought people gifts, went out and searched and found them just the right, the perfect gift. Said, look, I got this for you. Could you imagine finding someone a gift, just the perfect gift, handed it to them, and they said, oh, thanks. <laughs> just kind of set it over to the, that'd be a little discouraging, wouldn't it? But yet God gave you a gift called life, yeah. a beautiful gift. And many people, you've taken it and just set it over to the side and said, well, that's good. No, it's time to unwrap it and enjoy life. Yeah. Enjoy it to the fullest, in abundance, to the full, till it overflows. I, I, remember, I remember a few years ago, uh, for Christmas, I bought my mother-in-law a gift. And it was, it was Christmas, so I got her something. I got her a cemetery plot. And uh, that's, that's for my mother-in-law. And, uh, and, and I gave it to her. Well, the next Christmas, I didn't get her anything. She's a little upset about it. She goes, I can't believe you didn't get me anything for Christmas this year. I said, well, you didn't even use what I got you. Let. See, when you get a gift, when you get a gift, you're supposed to enjoy it, unwrap it to the fullest. Life was meant to be enjoyed. Listen, I want you to say something. Point to yourself again. Say, the rest of my year, rest of my year. will be the best of my year. I'm going to give you three things real quick that I think will make the rest of your year the best of your year. I don't, this year's not over yet. Maybe you've got some dreams. You've got some things you've been believing God for that you were believing for this year. You said they haven't happened yet. It's almost, this year's almost over. This year isn't even close to over. My goodness, God created the entire world in seven days. Think what he can do for you in the next 90. The rest of your year is going to be the best of your year. Three things. I want you to write these down. Three things I think are very important. I, I grew up in church. I didn't know we could enjoy life. I, the kind of church I grew up in, we didn't know we could enjoy life. Everything in, in the church I grew up in was a sin. We couldn't go to the movies. That was a sin. We couldn't go to church. My dad's a pastor. My grandfather's a pastor. My great-grandfather was a pastor. My grandfather's almost 90 years old, still preaches almost every weekend. And uh, I don't know. He's, he's been pre he's preaching a long time. He's got an autographed copy of the Bible. That's how long he's been preaching. But uh, uh, my dad's still preaching the gospel. But uh, I just, my, my goal is to give you hope to know that God is much, much, much more for you than you think he is. And God has great things in store for you. And he wants the rest of your year to be the best of your year. Number one, first thing you're going to need. If you got your Bible, uh, uh, get, just get, get your Bible. Go ahead. Take just a second. Grab your Bible. Grab a pen and a piece of paper because you want to write a couple things down. I think they'll help you. I'll just give you just a second. While you're, while you're getting it, just turn, uh, just open it. It's all good. 
<laughs> just open it. It'll all be good. You ever, you ever just opened your Bible, needed a word from God, just kind of opened your Bible, just hoping God would give you? I did that the other day. I was just, I was in a little situation. I wasn't sure what to do, and I just kind of like, God, you're going to have to give me something. I just kind of opened my Bible, pointed my finger, and I looked down, and it was that scripture where Judas hung himself. <laughs> I flipped the page trying to get another word. You, you got to be careful when you do stuff like that. If you got, turn to Proverbs, turn to Proverbs. Let me show you three things real quick I think are going to help you. It's, it's such an honor to be at the Inspirational Network, I mean, to be at INSP camp meeting and to be at this great church, Pastor Steve Muncy. Wow, uh, what, a, what an awesome, awesome place. And to be in Chicago area, my goodness, I, I love I love this place. I, 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 my favorite place, as soon as I got off, I got to my favorite place, Starbucks. <laughs> Is that different in Chicago? I don't know, but uh, uh, there was a lady behind the counter. She was new, I guess, because she had her badge on and it said trainee. And so I figured she was new. So I was talking to her for a minute. And I just, I just kidding with her, you know. I think figured she was new, and so I'm like, oh, hey, your mom named you trainee. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, it's Trené. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, it's, it's. Uh, anyway, it's, it's good. It's good. It's good. Listen. Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4. Let me, let me give you a couple things here. First thing, first thing you're going to need, three things if you want to make the rest of your year the best of your year. Number one, wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. We know the only problem you really ever have is a wisdom problem. Now, you don't hear a lot of people talk about wisdom. You hear a lot of people preach on faith and salvation and healing, and all those are important. But you don't hear a lot of people talk about wisdom. I mean, we don't think of ourselves as being wise. When's the last time you went to a party and someone said, hey, got any wisdom? <laughs> or last time someone went to lunch with you and said, hey, let's go share some wisdom. Yet the only problem we really ever have is a, is a wisdom problem. And it tells us right here, Proverbs chapter 4, to get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, interpretation. Do not forget, do not turn back from the words of my mouth. Forsake not wisdom. She'll keep you, defend and protect you. Love her, she will guard you. It's talking about the importance of wisdom. Maybe you've made a mistake before, and you learn from your mistake. There's one way to get wisdom. Now, that's the slowest way to get it, but that is one of the ways you can get wisdom. And so it's important. If you want the rest of your year to be the best of your year, invest in wisdom. The Bible is full of wisdom for every area of your life. No matter what you're facing today, no matter what you're going through, it may be your marriage. There's wisdom for God's word. People always ask me, why are you so into wisdom? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, number two, I grew up around a lot of dumb people. And I didn't want to turn out like them. One time, one time this lady in my neighborhood got up in the morning and went out to uh, get her paper. And when she got out in the yard, she noticed a body laying in the yard. She ran back in the house, called the police real quick, and the police said, man, we'll be right there. Where are you located? She said, I'm at 423 Sycamore Street. They said, 423 Sycamore, okay, ma'am, we'll be right there. But qu quickly, how do you spell Sycamore? She's like, oh, hmm, C, S, no, there's a Y, there's a y C. She said, you know, I'm not really sure. Could I just drag him over to Elm? <laughs> See, that's the kind of people I grew up around, and you just... You don't want to turn out like that. So that'll, that'll get you into wisdom right there. Verse number seven says, the beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Skillful and godly wisdom, for skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. With all you've gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. The word of God. How many believe the Bible? All right. Everything in God's word, there's wisdom for every area of your life. If you're in business, there's wisdom for God's word. He, he said, if you commit your plans to me, I'd cause them to prosper and succeed. In your marriage, there's wisdom. If you've ever negotiated something, the Bible is full of wisdom. The apostle Paul was an incredible negotiator. It's in the Bible. Time management, it's in the Bible. I'm doing a, a series on time management, just principles I found in the Bible. How many of you ever, have you ever procrastinated on something? Ever procrastinate? Yeah, the Bible, Proverbs talks a lot about procrastination. I was actually going to do a book on procrastination. I just, I just hadn't got around to it. But um, for your marriage, for your marriage, there's wisdom 
in God's word for your marriage. I, I notice uh, my wife and I are night and day different. Maybe you're married. Maybe you're saying, you know, my spouse and I are totally different. We, my wife and I, night and day different. She's from New York. I'm from Mississippi. It's a big difference right there. You know, she's Italian. My family, rednecks. It's a big difference right there, you know. Uh, uh, her family grew up wealthy. My family grew up poor. We were so poor growing up. My dad told us if the ice cream truck was playing music, that meant they were out. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, how we, that's how we grew up. And uh, we just night and day, night and day different, you know. And, and so we had to learn. We had to get wisdom to make this thing work. You know, her family wealthy. They lived in New York. They'd get up on Saturday mornings and go down to the art auctions. You know, art museums and man, you go to the more the longer you stay at an art auction, the more expensive stuff gets. My family totally different. We went to yard sales. <laughs> at a yard sale, the longer you stay, cheaper stuff gets. It just is a lot of differences, but we found in God's word how to make this whole thing work. There was wisdom. Maybe you've had a low self-esteem. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Three ways to see yourself. You can see yourself the way other people see you. You can see yourself the way you see yourself, or you can get a picture of yourself the way God sees you. Now, God's got a real good picture of you. You know, in the magazines, everybody looks perfect because they touched them up a little bit. They airbrushed them, fixed them. They look good. I, I kind of picture up in heaven, God's got a picture of you. God's got a picture of me, and, there, and it's perfect. He's already touched it up a little bit. You know, he's, he's already removed all the wrinkles of weakness. He's taken out all the blemishes of failure. The picture God has of you is a picture of perfect success. So if we could live into the picture God has of us, see ourselves the way God sees us, not the way other people see you. The other, way, other people, they may have a good picture of you. They may not. You know, I, I know how, I, you, maybe you've had a problem with low self-esteem before. I know growing up, I had, I had issues. People said stuff to me. You know, my first job was at a pet store. People kept coming in asking how much I was. That's hurtful, you know, to your self-esteem. One time in high school, this girl broke up with me. She said, I'm breaking up with you. You got low self-esteem. I'm like, great, that helped. You know. But everything I found, I begin to go to God's word. This is the greatest success manual for your life. Everything you need, you find in the word of God. From the smallest things to the biggest things, from self-esteem to negotiation to your marriage to, to walking in health and healing, all of it is found in God's word. There's wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Verse number eight, it says this, prize wisdom highly. That means put a value on wisdom. It says that wisdom will exalt and promote you. She'll bring you to honor when you embrace her. To me, that sounds like increase. How, how'd you like to be happier than you are right now? How would you like to be healthier than you are right now? How would you like to have more love in your home than you have right now? How would you like to have more money than you have right now? He said if you prize wisdom highly, maybe you own your own business. How'd you like to have more customers and clients the last three months of this year than you had the whole first nine months of this year? How would you, if you're in sales, how many, how'd you like to make more sales the last three months of this year than you did the whole first nine months of this year? Bonuses, promote, how would you just like to get a promotion before the year's over? Yeah, it says if I value wisdom, prize wisdom highly, wisdom will exalt and promote me. It'll bring me to honor when I embrace her. So if I put a value on it, uh, I, was, I was on uh, Facebook, two couple friends of mine I went to high school with, I, I was looking at on Facebook, maybe you do Facebook, I don't know if you, if you heard about um, YouTube and, and Twitter and Facebook merging, I don't know if y'all heard about big mergers on CNN the other night, all three of them are merging into one big company, they're changing the name of it, uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, they're just going to merge them all together and call it U-Twit-Face. But anyway... Um, so I ran into these two guys on Facebook, and, and this is kind of how this scripture works here. If you value wisdom, wisdom will promote you. They're both trying to get a promotion on their job. Promotion came available, and so they both went down and uh, said, we're interested in the promotion. They said, okay, just go down to HR, and there's a test to take. Take the test, and whoever gets the best score on the test gets the promotion. Wasn't real hard, just real simple thing. Go down and take the test. So they both went down to HR, and they took the test. They called them back in the next day. They said, hey, we looked over your test, and uh, actually, you both scored the exact same thing. You got the same score on the test. 
but we can't give you both the job. So we decided, Kenny, we're going to give you the job. And Roger was a little upset about it. He said, well, why does he get the job if we scored the same thing? They said, well, it was a wisdom. It was a test. It's basically a wisdom thing. They said, well, we scored the same thing. He said, well, it came down to question number 46. They said, what was question 46? They said, well, it probably wasn't as much the questions as it was your answers. They said, what was our answers? They said, well, Kenny, we gave you the job. Your answer was, I don't know. Roger, you put me either. <laughs> See, just a little bit of wisdom can make all the difference. Just a little bit of wisdom make all the difference in the world. So number one, you want the rest of your year to be the best. Say that with me. Say that one more time. Say the rest of my year, rest of my year. will be the best of my year. Number one, you need wisdom. Number two, second thing, look, just, uh, look over to Luke chapter 2 real quick. Luke chapter 2, verse number 52. Luke chapter 2, verse number 52 says, Jesus increased. There's that word increase. We're believing you're going to see increase by the end of this year. The next three months are going to be three incredible months for you. The rest of your year is going to be the best of your year. And so here, 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 here's... Here's what, as, I, as I begin to look at this, Luke chapter 2, verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. He increased in wisdom and stature and in favor. Say favor. favor. Second thing, you want to make the rest of your year the best of your year, you got to believe for favor. Say favor. favor. Now, favor is not a one-time event. Favor is a lifestyle. One of the most important things you can know about favor, whatever you recognize, you'll become thankful for. Whatever you're thankful for increases in your life. So as you learn to thank God for the little things, thank God for, well, you go to the mall, the parking lot's full, you can't find a spot, but all of a sudden, the front parking spot opens up. Thank you, Lord, for favor. You, you go to the, uh, 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 you go to the grocery store, the person in front of you has a cart full of stuff, you just have a gallon of milk. Oh, you just have one thing, go ahead, you can go in front of me. Thank you, Lord, for favor. You say, I thought that was just a coincidence. They were just being nice, letting me go in front of them. No, whatever you recognize, you become thankful for. Whatever you're thankful for increases in your life. So uh, uh, you go, the, well, I just thought it was, it was uh, I got lucky. They pulled out of the parking spot right when I got there. No, whatever you become thankful for. The other day, a friend of mine, we got a couple of Cokes. And I was opening my Coke. I said, thank you, Lord, for favor. He said, what are you doing? I said, hold on. Turn my cap over said, you want a 20-ounce Coke? I said, look at that favor. He said, oh, give me a break. That's not favor. I said, fine, open yours. <laughs> he said, play again. I said, don't mess with me. See, whatever you recognize, you become thankful for. Whatever you're thankful for increases. Favor, Sarah, barren in her womb, couldn't produce a child. God showed her favor. She had a child. Favor could change your medical report. You could have cancer today, God show you favor, be gone tomorrow. Favor can restore relationships. Favor is one of the greatest things you'll ever receive from God. Get around right people, favor comes towards you. I wrote a, a little book on favor called The Force of Favor. Give you over 100 facts about favor and seven ways to increase your favor. And I, and I talk in here about, about the importance of, of favor. Get around right people, favor comes towards you. Get around wrong people, favor leaves. You can lose favor as quick as you get favor. People are like elevators. They take you up or they take you down. Someone who's not taking you up will eventually take. Remember Jonah on the boat? Waves come, storm comes. They start throwing stuff off the boat. It wasn't what was on the boat causing the problem. It was who was on the boat. You ever notice wrong people do not leave your life voluntarily? Yeah. Jonah... Jonah didn't say, hey, listen, sorry, guys, this whole thing, it's all me. I'm going to go ahead and put on my gear and just kind of drop off the side. No, they had to throw him overboard. Bible says you got to love everybody. Didn't say you got to let everybody on your boat. And some of you, some of you are in storms. How do I get out of this? What do I do? Throw some people overboard. Listen, favor can cause you to regain in a day what the enemy stolen from you for years. One day, everything the enemy stolen from you, favor will always bring, no matter what you go through, favor will always bring you back to the top. 
Look at Joseph. I love the story of Joseph. I mean, he put on that coat, a coat of favor, went to show it to his brothers because if anybody's going to be happy about your favor, your family will. So he went, oh, <laughs> he went and put it on to show it to his family. What his brothers do? Beat him up, threw him in a pit. I think God gives you a family to prepare you for your enemy. You know, if you can make it through your family, you got a chance. But, but see, favor always brings you back to the top. I mean, his brothers threw him in a pity. He ends up at Potiphar's house. The Bible says Potiphar puts him in charge of the house. Well, he runs into a little problem with Potiphar's wife. They throw him in prison. In prison, the warden puts him in charge of everything. From there, he interprets a dream for Pharaoh. And in 24 hours, he goes from living in prison to living in the palace. One day he's in prison, the next day he's in the palace. One day you've got cancer, the next day they can't find a trace of it anywhere in your body. One day you're in debt, the next day you're debt free. One day you're, you're praying for your son to get saved, 24 hours later, mom, I'm coming home. 24 hours from right now, everything could be different than it is today. Favor will accelerate your destiny. What took some people 10 years will take you a year. What took some people a year will take you a day. Favor will accelerate your destiny. 24 hours in just a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer of favor over your life. I'm going to tell you what God did for me in a meeting in Dallas, Texas. When I began to believe God for favor. Third thing, let me give you the third thing real quick, and then I'm going to pray this prayer over your life. Number one was what? Wisdom. Wisdom. I hope you wrote that down. Number two? Yeah. Favor. Expect God's favor. It's not a one-time event. It's a lifestyle. You live a lifestyle of favor. It's a force, a force of favor. Third thing that will make the rest of your year the best of your year, year, generosity. I live to, just say, I live to give. I live to give. Say, I love to give. I love to give. See, when you begin to understand, I am, I'm a giver. I love giving. Do you like giving? How many love to give? See, you know, there's, a, there's actually a gift in the Bible, just like the gift of miracles or the gift of faith, the gift of healing. There are people that have the gift of giving, that God blesses them to be a blessing. Wouldn't it be incredible? I, I don't know about you. Wouldn't it be incredible in just a moment they'll put that number up? Wouldn't it be awesome if you could just say, hey, you know what, I'm going to go ahead. I, I believe, I mean, over a billion souls, 127 uh, uh, nations. I, you know what, I'm just going to give 100,000 tonight. And, and uh, wouldn't you like to do that? No, I know you got a little nervous. Is it your pledge? I'm just saying, wouldn't you like to be able to? Some of y'all got a little nervous there. But God blesses people to be a blessing. He, 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 God doesn't bless me uh, so I can get new rims on my car. He doesn't bless me so I can get a bigger house. That's not the reason God blesses me. God blesses me to be a blessing. And see, I understand when I hear the word financial increase or prosperity, one thing I think of first is, what's the purpose? The purpose of prosperity. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I had a guy come up to me the other day, and he said, you know, I don't need all that extra stuff you talk about. I just, I got enough for me and my family. We're taking care of. We don't need anything else. Really? That's about one of the most selfish things I've ever heard. How could you think you have enough? The more blessed you are, the greater blessing you'll be. To think I have enough, you have enough. You don't know any missionaries in South Africa trying to build an orphanage for babies with AIDS. You don't know any single moms that need a vehicle. You don't know any churches that are trying to build a, a, a building to help reach the lost. Or, or you don't know any networks like INSP that are touching billions of people in nations that we'll never even, we've never heard of or never will go to. Yet when what we have in our hand leaves our hand and goes into the work of God, I'm blessed. He said that he'll give me the power to create wealth. He didn't say he'd give me money. He said he'd give me the ability. God is looking for people who love to give. He's looking for people that desire the gift of giving. But there's a big responsibility that comes with the gift of giving. It's called the gift of getting. Everyone says, ooh, I love the gift of getting. But no, that's where it comes real. That's where you really have to stay with what you believe, that I desire the gift of giving. Because the more God blesses you, the greater blessing you can be. And so God's looking for people who he can pour his blessing through. He's looking for business people and, and people just like you and me that say, God, I desire to give big to you. Now, when this whole first thing started, I was a little nervous about I wasn't too into, I mean, I wanted to give, but he started speaking to me about stuff I wasn't ready to do. 
I remember being in a meeting and a preacher got up and said, there's several people here tonight God's speaking to about giving $500 in the offering. I remember sitting on the second row thinking, whoa, hope God speaks to them. <laughs> I didn't want to be one, just whoever they were, I was hoping God would speak to them. All of a sudden, I felt the Holy Spirit say, you're one of them, give 500. I said, oh, shoot. I started to reach for my checkbook. The guy next to me said, praise God, I'm one of them. I said, whoo, I guess I overheard God talking to him. I put my checkbook back in my pocket. My wife leaned over to me. She said, is God telling you anything? I said, I don't know. Is he telling you anything? She said, I think we're supposed to give 500. Shoot. I remember I got my checkbook and I looked at it. I had $503. You have got $503 and God wants 500 of it. You, you want to make sure he knows what he's doing, you know. I remember, remember I kind of leaned my checkbook up toward heaven so he could see how much I had in there. He said he already knew how much I had. I started writing the check out, 500 ink was smearing from the tears. You know. he's, like, he's like, God loves a cheerful giver. Great. You know, God also loves uncheerful givers. I couldn't find anywhere in the Bible where it said he didn't love uncheerful givers. People are like, you shouldn't cry when you give to God. I said, I'm not. I'm just watering my seed. Hey. Maybe you've done that before. You know, just watered your seed. And you know, I watered my seed one night. That's what happened to me. I tell the testimony in this book, The Force of Favor. And... Uh, I was in a meeting in Dallas, Texas. Old Roberts was teaching. And he was talking about how God wanted to bless us a thousand times more. How'd you like to be a thousand times happier than you are right now? A thousand times healthier than you are right now. A thousand times wealthier than you are right now. A thousand times, I'm thinking, oh man, I want this. I want a thousand times more. And I'm, I'm excited. At the end of the service, they're receiving an offering. And I'm, man, I'm ready to give. I mean, the anointing is there and I'm, I'm ready. And all, this, all of a sudden, uh, I leaned over to my wife. I said, honey, let's give $1,000 for a 1,000 times more because it sounded good. I like to tie my, my, my seed to what I hear. And so I'm sitting there. I'm all excited. My wife leans over to me. She says, honey, we don't have $1,000. I said, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to give 1000 if you don't have 1000 we didn't have a thousand. I said, God, I don't have a thousand, but I want to do something in this offering. I want to do something because the, the anointing was, was so. And he said, I want you to give $111 in the offering. I said, $111, that's. That's weird, you know, give me an even number. And you can even round it up, 150, 100, but 111 was just weird. He'd never spoke to me anything like that before. I mean, has God ever told you to do something weird? Maybe something different than what you're, and the other day I'm in a restaurant. He says, I want you to pay for that family over there. Well, that's, oh, okay. I mean, I, I obey, but it, it just it weird things, you know? And there's, this was on those times, I'm like 111. I leaned over to Christine, to my wife, I said, honey, I feel like God wants us to give $111. She said, that's weird. I said, I know, I just told him. <laughs> I said, God doesn't make any sense to me, but if that's what you want me to do, you know, that's, that's what I'll do. And so I got out my, my checkbook and I started writing a check. Now, I didn't know why I was doing it. I just knew God had said to do it. Didn't make any sense. I'm like, God, I don't know why. I wish you'd tell me why I'm doing 111, but, but this is what you said to do, so I'm going to obey your voice. So I'm writing it out. All of a sudden, he says, look at your Bible. So I look over at my Bible, and he says, There's, read the scripture Oral Roberts has just been teaching from. And I look, and the scripture is Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11. 1, 11. It says, may the Lord increase you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised. And he said, he said here's what I want you to do. He said, I want you to believe me, because I'm thinking a thousand times more health, a thousand times more love in my home, a thousand, I'm thinking of all these things. He said, I want you to believe me for a thousand times more favor. He said, favor will bring you anything else you do need. Favor could change your medical report. Favor can restore your marriage. Favor could change everything. So I begin to write the check, $111. He said, right in the corner of your check, Deuteronomy 111, write your name and write the word favor. I said, okay, Deuteronomy 111, favor. He said, okay. Uh, I said, yeah, I'm ready to give. He said, okay, what about your family? I said, what about it? my family? I'm the family, me and my wife, and we're, you know. He said, write another one for your family. Oh, okay. Deuteronomy 111, favor my family. Okay. 
He said, what about your ministry, your business, what you, what you do to make a living? I said, yeah, well, that's what we do. We are that. He said, no, write another one for your business or for your ministry. Huh. By this time, I began to water my seed again. Because <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was okay with the 111. Now, this is my third one, 300 and $33, three $111 seeds, one for me, one for my family, and one for my, my income. I, I consider it my, my, my life, my income, my finances, uh, my business, whatever you want to call it. That night, he spoke to me to plant $333. We began to believe God. We, you know, we didn't know what a thousand times more favor looked like. We said, God, this is what you said to do. We're going to obey your voice. We planted $333. Within two weeks of that day, our life began to change forever. An anointing of the thousand times more. According to Deuteronomy 1. Now listen, you can't, I'm telling you, you can't pay God 111, 333, $333 million to give you favor. I wouldn't tell you that in a moment. But I do believe you can plant a seed and expect a harvest. And you say, why the 111? Why do you got to do a number like that? It, it's, real, it's just real simple to me. It's just the Bible. I just like to tie my faith to a scripture. There's nothing, no principle in the Bible that says you have to do that. It's just something that helps me to remember. When I look at that checkbook or I look at my, my debit card statement comes in, my credit card, and I see that 333 or 111, I remember Deuteronomy 111, that he would increase me a thousand times more and bless me. Within two weeks, a lady shows up at our house, says, God told me to bless you. I'm supposed to come here and buy you something for your house. Well, at that time, we, we lived in a little government-assisted apartment. Government, sub, the night we did this, we didn't have a house. Government subsidized housing. Didn't have a, 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 a bed. We had an air mattress. Didn't have a dining room table and chairs. Just starting our ministry, Dave Martin International. People laughed at us. International, where y'all been? I'm like, we went, we went to Canada once. I mean, my first desk, one of those card tables. I answered my own phone. Dave Martin International. Can I speak with Dave Martin? One moment, please. <clears throat> Hello, this is Dave. Yeah. Your staff is so efficient. Trained to myself. Um, lady comes in our house and says, what, what do you need? God said to buy you something for your house. I said, I, I, don't, I don't know. I kind of felt uncomfortable. I'm, uh, uh, a toaster, shower curtains, uh, all of a sudden, out of my mouth, I said, you know, there's a bed we've been looking at. My wife hit me. She said, don't tell about the bed. The bed's expensive. I said, well, she asked. She said, there's a bed. I said, there's a bed. My wife's right. It's expensive. I probably shouldn't have said it. She said, no, God said, whatever you said you wanted, I'm supposed to buy it for you. I said, well, praise God. Get in the car. I wanted to drive her to the front. When God's moving, you got to go. You got to go right then. And so... I drove her down there to the furniture store. She bought us the bed, the mattress, the box spring. She bought us the whole thing. And from that day, favor began to rest on our life. We're praying for my wife's grandfather. Remember, we sowed one for our family. We were praying for my wife's grandfather, 75 years old, never given his heart to God. On a Sunday night, Grandma calls us. She says, you're not going to believe this. She's crying, laughing. We can't really tell what she's doing. But she said, hey, listen, Grandpa went to church with me tonight. When they gave the altar call at 75 years old for the very first time, Grandpa lifted his hand, walked down the aisle, and gave his heart to God. Now, I don't believe for a minute I paid God $111 for my family to get, to get my grandpa saved, but I do believe my seed produced a harvest in my life. I want to pray a prayer for you. And I'm going to believe three things, wisdom, favor, and generosity would be so strong the next three months of your life. And that God would begin to do some of the most incredible things for you that favor, that the gift and the anointing of favor would be released in your life. I'm going to pray for you. And then I want you to do something. In just a moment, we're going to have an opportunity. The number will come on your screen. You're going to have an opportunity to sow, tie your faith with this word, and believe God that the force of favor would be released in your life, in your family, and in your finances. Three things. God's speaking to many of you to do just like he spoke to me to do that night. To stand on Deuteronomy 111, plant three $111 seeds. One for me, one for my family, and one for my, my business or my finances. Father, I thank you that you're speaking to someone else tonight. Lord, that they said, you know what, I'm believing that the rest of my year is going to be the best of my year. I'm believing that the next three months that your favor is going to be released in my life like never before.
in my life, in my family's life. Lord, I thank you for restoration in families. Father, I thank you for financial breakthroughs and increase. I thank you for sales that weren't going to go through that are going to go through. Father, I thank you for businesses that will increase. Father, I thank you for jobs and better jobs. Father, I thank you that the anointing of favor would be released. Father, again, we're not trying to buy favor. But Lord, I ask the people tonight to do two simple things. Number one, in just a moment, when that number comes on the screen, number one, they're going to sow a seed of expectation. They're going to sow this and believe that favor would be released in their life. We're not trying to buy favor, but we're planting a seed. And I thank you that the harvest of favor will be released in their life like never before. The second thing, Father, I ask them to do is just to be obedient to your voice. As you're speaking to them, as that's stirring in their spirit, as that the faith is rising in their spirit for that $111 seed. Three times, one for them, one for their family, and one for their finances. Father, I thank you that it is going to release something like never before. Father, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, the number's coming there on the screen. If that's you, if God's speaking to you about that, you said, I'm believing for favor like never before in my life. Quickly, go to the telephone. The numbers are on your screen. Say, Dr. Dave, I want to set myself an agreement that the anointing of favor would be released in my life, in my family's life, and in my finances. Three hundred and thirty three dollars why Deuteronomy 1 verse 11 that the Lord would increase you a thousand times more just talk to a couple in their family they said we planted it for our family believing in our family for favor this man had, him and his wife went through a divorce six years ago praying believing God for restoration in their family they went to a wedding they both showed up at a wedding didn't know each other was gonna be there and decided afterward to go out and have some coffee they went out, had some coffee, began to talk, began to date again. Six years, their family was separated, had children. Just a couple weeks from now, they'll walk down the aisle and they'll reunite their marriage and their family. I don't know about you, but I call that favor. I call that favor. I don't know where it is you need favor the most, but I want you to quickly go to your telephone. Say, Dr. Dave, I'm standing in agreement. I'm believing for favor. And when you plant that $333, everyone who does that, we're going to send you a copy of this book, The Force of Favor. Over 100 facts about favor, uh, uh, memory scriptures, 52 memory scriptures for every week. Seven ways to increase your favor. Favor is one of the greatest things you'll ever receive from God. A thousand times more, according to Deuteronomy 1, verse 11. Now, a thousand times more health, great. A thousand times more finances, great. A thousand times more love in your home, great. But we're believing for a thousand times more favor. Favor will release everything else you do need. Quickly, the number's there on your screen. Go to the phone and say, Dr. Dave, I'm standing in agreement. I'm standing in agreement, believing. There was a man just a few days ago said, you know what, Dr. Dave, I'm believing. I, he heard me share the $111 seed testimony, and he planted three, just like I'm talking to you about right now. His business, this was in Honolulu, Hawaii. His business was with the hotel industry. And all of a sudden, he had some things happen, and, he, and they, he lost all the contracts because he couldn't get a, a certain permit for his business. They just weren't putting it through. He didn't know what he was going to do. He said, God, I need favor. He said, for me, for my family, and for my business. Within 24 hours... He gets a telephone call. Gets a telephone call and they say, uh, we've, we've looked at your permit. This thing, he's been going back and forth. They weren't approving the permit. Within minutes of when he needed to sign contracts for these hotels, he gets a telephone call. His permit goes through. I don't know about you, but I call that favor. And he gets the deal, $250,000 contract with the, uh, with the hotels there in the, in the Waikiki Beach area. I don't know about you, but if that was you, you'd be a little happier about that. Right after that $111 seed, three of those, those $311 seeds that my wife and I sowed. Quickly, again, the numbers are on your screen. Quickly, go to your telephone. Say, Dr. Dave, I want to be one of those. I'm believing to plant the $333. Numbers are on your screen. You can do it on your debit card, your credit card. Get that seed in the ground. Don't wait. Don't wait. Because when that seed leaves your hand, a harvest is leaving heaven. Head is straight for your house. As long as you keep it in your hand, that's all it'll ever be. But when you put it in God's hand, he begins to multiply it. My wife went to, not long after we planted that $111, those $311 seeds, my wife went to Walmart one day to get some Walmart stuff, whatever Walmart stuff is, it's in the checkbook a lot. 
But as she went to get some uh, toilet paper or toothpaste, whatever it was, while she's there, a lady comes up to her with a video camera, asks her if she'd be interested in being in a Walmart commercial. She said, we got people at 20 Walmarts around the country looking for two friends to be in a Walmart commercial. Would you and your friend like to do it? They went, they, they auditioned, they came home and told me about it. They said, that people at 20 Walmarts. I'm laughing, you're not going to be on a Walmart commercial. You're going to be on candid camera, but you're not, you don't go to Walmart and people ask you to be in commercials. Three days later, we get a telephone call from Walmart. Out of people at all the Walmarts around the country, her and her friend were chosen to be in a Walmart commercial. They go down to Walmart. They're looking for the lady with the video camera. Walmart's blocked off, lights, cameras everywhere. They come in, they say, they, look, this, uh, uh, we have to learn lines. What do we got to do? They said, no, you're just going to go back here. Uh, you're going to shop. We're going to videotape you shopping. You're going to talk about how much you love Walmart, and we'll videotape you. They shop for eight hours. Walmart's great. I love Walmart. Let's look good on me. They videotaped them, made a commercial out of it. At the end of the day, handed her and her friend both a check for $800. And I don't know about you, but I call that favor. That's the first time my wife ever went shopping, came home with more money than she left with. They said, by the way, it's going to be a national commercial, which means every time it airs, you're going to get paid for it. The commercial started airing. It was going to air for 13 weeks. By the end of the first two weeks, we'd already received over $5,000 in the mail. By the end of the 13 weeks, over $15,000 came in the mail. We got free health insurance paid for an entire year by Walmart. You never know. You never know how God's going to bless you. Next time you go to Walmart, you'll fix your hair, do your makeup. You, I know every time I walk by the security cameras, I go, how you doing? I smile a little bit. Listen, quickly go to that telephone. If you can't get through, just keep calling the $333. Dude, listen, if you're watching, say, you know, I can't do the whole thing right now. For the next three months, say, you know what? I'm going to plant $111 seed for the next three months. Today, I'm going to plant my first one. Give them your debit card, your credit card. They'll automatically do it the next couple months. You won't even have to worry about it. But say, you know what? I'm believing for me, my family, and my finances to receive the anointing of favor like never before. Quickly, go to the telephone. If you can't do the whole thing, if you can do the whole thing, let's get it in the ground. Believe for all. If you need to, over the next three months, $111 a month for the next three months, say, I'm believing that favor would be released in my life like never before. Say, the rest of my year, rest of my year. will be the best of my year. Of Everyone that calls, we're going to send you the book, The Force of Favor. The Force of Favor. It, it shares the whole testimony from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11. That the Lord would increase us. Why are we doing 111 three times? Three areas of our life. $311 seeds. Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. Nothing weird. We can't pay God $111, but we can plant a seed. You'd never plant tomato seeds in your backyard and not expect tomato plants to come up. When you plant a tomato seed, you would expect a tomato. Why would you give to God seed? and not expect to harvest. God himself used this principle, for God so loved the world that he what? He gave. he gave. God was a giver. He gave his only son, his very best seed. He sowed the best he had. Why? Because he wanted a family. Today we're here. We're the harvest of the seed that he sowed when he gave his son. Listen, some of you, that $333 is your very best seed. When you go to the telephone, tell them, I'm believing for favor for me, my family, in my finances. If you need to split it up over three months, you can do that as well. We'll rush you this book, The Force of Favor. And you'll, it'll just begin to share the testimony uh, of what God would do in your life. Remember the boy with a few loaves and fishes? As long as he held it in his hand, it's just a few loaves and fishes. But when God talked to him about a seed to release it, put it in Jesus' hand, it multiplied, fed thousands, plus he had 12 baskets to take home with them. God had a harvest waiting for him on the other side of his seed. God wants to release favor in your life like never before. I'm telling you, quickly, go to the telephone. Don't miss this opportunity. We're going to pray and believe God for favor. Dave, before you pray, people are taking a step of faith, a step of obedience as they're wrapping that seed with expectation that God will release a spirit of favor. I believe that spirit of favor is getting ready to overtake them. They're calling from all over, from Texas, from Georgia, from Alabama, from Tennessee, from Illinois, from California, from Kansas, from Oklahoma, from Connecticut. Oh, come on! From New Jersey, from Delaware. 
from Michigan, from Florida, from Arizona, Iowa, I'll tell you, North Carolina, South Carolina. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you, people are getting ready to experience favor in their life like they've never experienced. I believe, that, I believe the last three months of this year, as you spoke, are going to be better and greater than the rest yeah. of this whole year put together. Yes. Amen. Favor. Favor, favor, favor of God. The, favor for you, favor for your family, and favor for your finances. Don't miss this opportunity. Again, the number is still on the screen. You still have an opportunity to be a part. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11. We're planning $333 for our, ourselves, our family, and our finances. Quickly go to that telephone, and we're going to just pray a prayer we are. of favor that it would be released Amen. in their life. Spirit and what's amazing, what I love about this, is they have this opportunity to sow, that the anointing of favor would be released on their life. And they're sowing and believing for favor, but on the same time of sowing and believing for the harvest in their life, they are impacting the nations of yes, the world. And that God is going to bless them so that yes, they can be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Impact 2020 yes. is happening through their seed right yes, now. Yes. 20 million souls. This year, 20 million through this Inspiration year. Ministries, yes. we're coming awfully close to that number already. That's Favor. what we prayed for this yes. year, that God would give us the ability to touch 20 million people's lives this wow. year. The year's got three more months left. Yes. We're going to do it. We're going to make it. More souls in the last more three months. Hallelujah, than in the first nine months. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to pray a prayer of favor over that. their life. Father, I just thank you. Lord, many have called. Many are still on the phones planning that $333, three $111 seeds. Father, I thank you that the favor of God would be released in their life, in their homes, in their finances, in their marriages, with their children. Father, I thank you exactly where they, that woman that's believing to get pregnant. Father, I thank you for favor in her wound. The one in the middle of the, of the legal situation, I thank you for favor turning that for them. Father, I thank you everywhere. Every person needs favor. Father, I thank you. It's being released now. You said of two or three agree touching anything, it is done. So, Father, we set ourselves in agreement. And I thank you that the next three months, Father, I thank you that favor would flow like a river through their life, like a parade, just one miracle after another miracle. Salvation, family members they've been praying oh, for to give their heart right to God. Right Father, I thank oh, you, Lord, that this Thanks seed, will produce the harvest in our life. And Father, I thank you for allowing each one of us to be a blessing to the kingdom. Father, because that's why you bless us, to bless the kingdom. And Father, we thank you that the kingdom of God is being blessed through Inspirational Network. And Father, I thank you that we get to be a part of it with our seed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. A spirit of favor is stirring. Go to the phone and get that seed in the ground and watch that spirit of favor come upon you, upon your family, upon your finances like you've never experienced it before. It's the word watered with your obedience. It's the word watered with your faith. It's the word watered with your expectation that will bring about the release because as you release the seed that's in your hand, God will release the harvest that he has on his mind for you. You continue to go to the phone and sow that $333 all at once or over the next three months during this special camp meeting season here on Inspiration Network.